Hey everybody, this is Mr. Bortnick for AP Calculus AB. We are in Unit 5, Analytical Applications of Differentiation. We're in Topic 5.5 today, which is using the candidates test to determine absolute or global extrema. Just a heads up that today is a calculator day. Uh, they're gonna be necessary for this lesson. So if you've got your TID3 or TID4, two reminders uh, for AP Calculus and using calculators is that we always use radian mode. And if you're rounding an answer, please make sure that you're rounding to the nearest thousandths, which is three digits after the decimal place. Enjoy today's notes. All right, for 5.5, we're determining absolute extrema from uh, candidates. Uh, so let's start with a picture, just sort of an arbitrary picture that we've got here. All right, let's imagine that this is uh, our function f of x. And what this is saying is that uh, the critical points, so the critical points which we talked about in the previous lessons, give us possibilities of finding a maximum or minimum. So the reason why we care about critical points is there are places where we may have a maximum or minimum. The ends of the interval or the endpoints give us other possibilities of finding a maximum or minimum. So if we have a closed interval, so if we know that the function stops and starts at specific x values, we can determine uh, maximums and minimums, you know, thinking about the difference between, say, an absolute max versus relative. So there could be absolute versus relative. Uh, again, absolute maximums and minimums being the highest or lowest on the given interval, and relative just being slightly higher or lower than the ones directly to the left and right of it. Um, so let's talk about this with this, this sort of arbitrary graph here. For absolutes, we can see that there is a lowest point. There is one point which is absolutely the lowest one. And so uh, this would, uh, this end point, that we've got right here uh, could possibly be it would be our absolute minimum be our absolute minimum because it is lower than everywhere else similarly we could see that this point up here is higher than the rest of them this point would be our absolute maximum now in addition to that we could see that there are some critical points so there's so there's an end point here we've got these like two end points to our graph and we can see that uh, this would be a critical point. So it is a minimum. But it would, again, that would also be a critical point because the derivative there, the slope of the uh, tangent line would be zero. This point here is also a critical point because the derivative is undefined. Similarly, this is a critical point because the slope of the tangent line would be zero. Also right here, we would have a critical point because the slope of the tangent line would be zero. So there's lots and lots of critical points. Uh, in fact, uh, at these critical points, we notice that uh, some of these are maximums and minimums. Here we have a minimum. This is a relative minimum. Here we have a maximum, which is a relative maximum. So when, again, that idea of relative minimum or maximum is that this minimum is lower than all of the points directly to the left and to the right of it, but it is not absolutely the lowest point on here. So we don't call it absolute minimum, it's just a relative minimum uh, for that. And this point here is a relative maximum because it's higher than the points directly to the left and directly to the right of it. Um, great. So if we're talking about candidates for absolute extrema, what we see from this picture up here is that there are sort of two places where these absolute extrema can be, right? The absolute maximum and absolute minimum. Uh, one of those is at critical points. So it could be at critical points. And again, we know that those are places where f prime of x is equal to zero or it's undefined. And uh, it could also be, as we saw here, it could also be at the end point, right? The end point could possibly be the highest or lowest. So in general, if we are looking for uh, absolute extrema, so if we don't, if we care that it's absolutely the highest or lowest value, we need to consider both like critical points and the endpoints. It's not enough to just look at the critical points. Uh, we need to also look at the endpoints on which that function is defined. Great. Let's talk about number one. So for the absolute, uh, find the absolute maximum value. So they want the absolute maximum value uh, for that function. 
and the absolute minimum value of that function, uh, given that f of x is equal to x cubed minus 3x squared plus 1 on this given closed interval. Remember to show that you checked all of the candidates. So we're doing this thing that's called the candidates test. Uh, again, candidates test. Um, and here's what we need. We need to first find the critical points. Let's take the derivative. So f prime of x is equal to 3x squared minus 6x. And we can see that this, there's no x value that would make this undefined. So I really only care where f prime of x is equal to 0. So 3x squared minus 6x equals 0. If we factor that out, that's 3x times x minus 2. So our critical uh, points are at x equals 0 or x equals 2. Got both of those. So these are our critical points. And what we're going to do is we're going to essentially set up our candidates. So the possible places that could be absolute, like the, the biggest or the smallest for our candidates test are the x values at the critical points or the two endpoints that we've got. So I'm going to just order these from least to greatest. And what we're going to do is we're going to look at the original function. We're going to find f of negative 1 half. That came from our endpoint. We want to find f of 0. We want to find f of 2. And we want to find f of 4. Now, the general gist of the candidates test is we're looking at just the x values here that are either the critical points or the endpoints. What we know is that the largest one of these uh, outputs for the function is going to be our absolute maximum, and the smallest of these outputs is going to be our absolute minimum, because these are the only places where absolute extrema can occur. So if it's the largest, that means it's absolute max. If it's the smallest, it's the absolute min. Um, let's pause here for a moment and take a look on uh, how to do these on the calculator. Using the function x cubed minus 3x squared plus 1, we're going to evaluate it on these at these four x values. All right, so for this problem, uh, we are trying to use our TID3 or TID4 to quickly evaluate this function at four different x values. One way that we can do that is we can go to the y equals screen and type the function in for our y equals. The function that we have is x cubed minus 3x uh, minus, and we want to make sure that we're leaving the exponent for this, so minus 3x squared, and then uh, plus 1. And so once we've got our function in, uh, there's a couple of different ways we could do this. We could try to use the function notation on the calculator, uh, but I'm going to return to a trick that we did earlier this year where I want to you have it uh, make a table. I want to make a table of those values. So what I'm going to go is go to table set, which is above the window button. I'm going to hit second and window. And for my independent variables, I wanted to ask which ones to use. So often if you haven't changed this, it's probably on auto. You might want to move that to ask which means it's going to ask me what x values I want this at. Uh, once I've got that, I can go to my table, which is uh, on second and graph. And I have some old values here, so I'm just going to delete these, these values that we had here. I'm not worried about those. But what I can do now, which is really nice, is plug in the exact x values that I want. We want from our uh, problem here uh, to use the endpoints and critical values. So I'm going to plug in negative 1 half for the first value. That's going to give me my output of 0 0.125. I'm going to have it plug in 0, which gives me an output of 1. I'm going to plug in 2, which is going to give me an output of negative 3. And I'm going to plug in 4, which is going to give me an output of 17. This is a much faster way to evaluate your function at a number of different values instead of having to go to the home screen and, and be really careful with parentheses and things like that. It's nice that you can just quickly type in as many x values as you need. Let's go back to our uh, sheet and finish this problem up. All right, so using our calculator trick, we were able to see that f of negative 1 half was 0 0.125. We saw that f of 0 was 1. We saw that f of 2 was negative 3, and f of 4 was equal to 17. Again, what we're looking for here is just the largest and smallest values. This would be our minimum because it is the, uh, and it's our absolute minimum uh, because it's the smallest value. And then this is going to be our absolute maximum because it's the largest. Again, the idea here is that 
absolute extrema can only occur at critical points and the endpoint. So if I have listed out all of my critical points and the endpoints here, the smallest one must be the minimum and the biggest one must be the maximum. Uh, and so our conclusion here is that the absolute maximum, the absolute maximum uh, value is 17 when x is equal to 4 and the absolute minimum value is negative 3 when x is equal to 2. So this would be my conclusion statement. Uh, my justification work was first finding those critical points, then doing my candidates test, again listing out my two endpoints. The negative one half and four came from the interval that they gave us, those are the endpoints. And then the other two x values came from our critical points. You must test all of these when you're doing the candidates test. This is a common free, resp uh, free response uh, style problem on the AP exam, and this is what they're looking to see. You don't need to name that you're doing the candidates test, they just are looking to see that you've tested the endpoints and the critical points on it. Let's try number two. Uh, here they're giving us a graph of f prime of x. So it's a graph of f prime of x, uh, the derivative of f. Uh, we can identify relative extrema at the x-intercepts. So we can identify relative extrema at the x-intercepts. Can you find the x-coordinate of the absolute maximum and the absolute minimum? Okay, so what are they talking about in terms of relative maxes and mins? Uh, we know that at x equals 1, if we take a look at this specific spot right here, we notice that f prime of x is equal to 0. And actually, that's also the case right here, that the output of the f prime function is 0. So those are critical points. They are critical points uh, on this. And in general, we actually even know more than that. We notice that at x equals 1, the derivative is going from positive to negative. So I know that uh, f of 1 has to be a, is, a, is a maximum. It's a maximum. Since f prime of x changed sign from positive to negative. So I know, notice that I know this about the f function, which I don't actually know what, what the function is. I only have a graph of its derivative, but I know that at, at x equals 1, it has to be a maximum because the derivative switched from positive to negative. It was above the x-axis to below the x-axis. All right, so similarly, we can see that at x equals negative 3, uh, that must be a minimum. So f of 3 is a minimum since f prime of x switched or changed sign from negative to positive. So I know for sure from looking at this graph that there is a minimum of on f of x at, uh, at x equals 3 and a maximum at x equals 1. We also know that uh, if we're talking about absolute maximum and absolute minimum, that we need to also consider the two endpoints here. And so we want to make sure that we are taking those into account. And the way that we can think about this, uh, we can actually make an argument about which of these is, is larger or smaller. So the way that we can make this argument is actually thinking about how long the function was increasing or decreasing. So what we can see here is that x equals negative 3. After x equals uh, negative 3, the derivative was positive for quite a long time. It was positive from x equals negative 3 all the way to x equals 1. This entire time between negative 3 and 1, the derivative is positive, which meant that f of x was increasing. Then we see that the derivative was negative, so it went downwards. It decreased between x equals 1 and x equals uh, 3, and then it started rising again. So what we can tell, uh, what we can tell is that uh, our maximum, the absolute maximum, would have to be at x equals one, and here's the reason. So we can see that essentially for this whole time here, that the function was going upwards, and then 
for this time from one to three, it was going downwards, but it was for a much shorter length of time, right? One was from negative three to one, one was from one to three. And then after that, it started going upwards again. So, you know, would we say that X equals four is, is higher than X equals one? Probably not because there is more space here below this where it was decreasing than what we see right here. So while uh, x equals four is likely a maximum, it is not larger than x equals one. And part of that is due to the area between the curve and the x-axis on these two parts. We're gonna be talking about this a lot more in the next couple of chapters when we flip over to talking about integrals. But this is a nice little sort of preview into how we can think about whether uh, something is absolute max or absolute min and not just a relative max and relative min. Uh, similarly here, I can argue that there's probably an absolute minimum at x equals negative three because it started, I mean, it started some value and then it increased for a very long time and then decreased a little bit until it got to x equals three from one to three. But this area here between x equals one and x equals three is far smaller than the area from negative three to one. Um, and so there was just less opportunity for this uh, function to decrease below what it was at x equals negative three. Now notice also, I don't know the actual outputs of these. I don't know what f of one is or f of negative three is. I am making all of these arguments using just the f prime graph. But again, we are gonna get more into these types of arguments uh, when we start talking about integrals in the next couple chapters. Uh, but for right now, that is it for today's notes for section 5.5. Try out the practice and the test prep problems. Uh, Check your answers, come to class with any questions that you've got, and good luck on your mastery check. Have a great day.